Yeah. This guy got drunk at the golf club, went home, found his wife in bed with his best friend. The wife stared up at her husband as she looked at the friend and said, Oh, Lord, there's blabbermouth, and I'll be all over town. <laughs> Same type of story, you see. I tell golf stories, and people who don't play golf, they like this. Doesn't mean they're mentally retarded, it's just that they don't know. That's right. Sure. Like this golfer went to the house of ill repute. A few minutes later, the little girl come running downstairs to the madam. She said, what the hell is a mulligan? <laughs> now, if you look around, you'll see people leaning across the table explaining it to other people. They don't know. It's that simple. It's not a dirty story at all, not at all. But if you don't play golf and if you don't understand that terminology, you say, well, that must be some dirty off-color golf joke. <laughs> I'll explain this story to you and I'll tell you what a mulligan is. In golf, if you go out to play golf, you tee up the ball on the first tee and you hit the ball and it's a bad shot. You get another one free. It's called a mulligan. <laughs> now should I tell the story all over again? Now this one you can all understand. This guy came home from the golf course and he was not his usual half-drunken belligerent self, antagonistic and a little bit cruel to his wife. And as she looked at her husband more closely, she noticed that his eyes were very red-rimmed. She said, Frank, what's the matter with you? He said, damnest thing you could imagine. The best friend I've had in 42 years. We're out in the second fairway and all of a sudden Harry just doubled up and dropped dead. She said, good heavens, Frank, that's terrible. He said, that ain't the half of it. All the rest of the way around the golf course, it was hit the ball and drag Harry. And hit the ball and drag Harry. <laughs> that enough? That's enough golf stories now, isn't it? Like this real hard charging guy, he's got this, you got these two very meek employees working for him, Casper Milk Toastish types, you know? So this real hard-charging boss said at noon one day, he says, I'm taking off the rest of the afternoon. I guess you two guys can watch the office without me. And away he went. So this one little meek guy says, hey, he, said, he took off. He'll never come back. He said, let's go to the racetrack. He'll never come back. He'll never catch us. Techman said, oh, no, I wouldn't dare take off. He comes back. He might fire us both. Techman said, well, I'm going to the track. He'll never come back. I want to go down that racetrack. I heard that's a great place to go. So the second one says, well, if you want to take a chance, I will too. He says, you go to the track, but I don't like those horse races. He says, I'll just go home and take a nap. So the one little meek guy went tearing off to the racetrack, and the second little guy went home. And as was his custom, he walked into his home quietly, upstairs to the bedroom to take a nap. And as he opened the bedroom door, ye gods, there's his boss with his wife. So he quietly closed the door and went back downstairs. Nothing more was said. Next day, back at the office, once again, this hard-charging boss says, Well, I'm taking off at noon again today. I guess you two guys can run this office. And away he went. So the one little meek guy says, Hey, he said, I won $27 at the track. He says, Let's take off again. He'll never catch us. That one says, Oh, no, I wouldn't dare take off again. I damn near got caught yesterday. 